felt like you were kind of misrepresenting what I was saying. Okay, so that's why I'm asking. What I was actually saying was just. And on top of that, because people use that works based mindset framework, was it expected that you believed in a literal heaven and hell? And she said, yes, absolutely. I mean, it is an accurate observation. People who identify as Christian more and more assimilate to. Bruce Lawn. Adam, can I ask you a question? The fifth is yeah. the clincher, yeah. Uh, it seems like you've kind of softened on this conversation. When I first reacted to you on Vlad, I, you, I were very, you, like, this. Okay. you were very like, oh, religion is BS. And now like your ABBA interview, your, your okay. stuff with Sneaker, I which I love. I heard you say this last night. I felt yeah. like you were kind of misrepresenting what I was saying. Okay, so that's why I'm asking. What I was actually saying was just, I see a way where most religious people, it's probably a net positive thing in their life. Now you can point to like all kinds of like different uh, countries all over the world where maybe that's not the case, but at least for the average American, when they say that they're Christian or they say that they pray, they say they have a relationship with God, I think that that's very unlikely that there's anything negative coming from that. And so as a result, the vast majority of the time, like with T-Rell, who's, he's Christian, luscious Christian, I'm probably never gonna engage them in the conversation of like, oh, I don't believe in God, let's fucking talk about it. Just because I don't really feel like that's an important conversation for us to necessarily have. Now, sure. if they wanted to like have a debate or wanted to engage on that, that's fine. But it's not something that I feel like is the biggest problem that we're facing as a country. And I do think that it probably plays a pretty important role in a lot of people's lives, even though I think that it's ultimately rooted in nothing. But what, what I'm saying is you, it seems like you've kind of softened on from where you were in that Vlad interview, which- But what did I say in that? that you, you, said, it, that? Uh, you said religion is BS. And right. that was the part that- That, 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 that is how I feel. That, that yeah. sounded like uh, from it's BS to I see a net positive. That sounds like I a I still think it's BS. Like, in terms of the likelihood of it being true. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that I think for most people, they don't really get anything negative out of it. And for instance, like one thing that if you were to ask me when I was 15 or 16, why I was adamantly anti-religion, I would have said, well, I'm very much in favor of gay people having all the same liberties as, as straight people. And it seems like the vast majority of Christian people are very much against uh, gay marriage and stuff like that. And that would have been one of the things I would have hung my hook, my uh, argument on. And that's probably like a lot less true now where probably a large, a much larger percentage of people who describe themselves as Christian would now say that they're in favor of gay marriage, or at least would not have anything in particular negative to say about gay people. So that's a way in which I feel like society has changed religion. Like for instance, when I've spoken to my mom about religion, I asked her one time, when you were a kid, if you said that you were a Christian, was it expected that you believed in a literal heaven and hell? And she said, yes, absolutely. If you didn't believe in a literal heaven and hell, you weren't religious. And I think that probably the majority of Christians in America right now would not tell you that they actually believe that you're gonna burn in hell if you die and you're not Christian. And in particular, the idea that like people of other religious faiths are gonna burn in hell for not being of the same religious faith. And those aren't aspects of Christianity. Those are aspects of, or ways in which society has, and secularism has, has dulled down Christianity to the point where I don't consider it very dangerous now because I think it's so far removed from what it was a couple hundred years ago. I actually think Adam's making a good point. Hmm. Here he's saying that people who self-identify as Christians, and we looked at that study done, mm -hmm. like men, very few of them believe in, uh, you know, Jesus is the only way, very few of them believe in hell. Very, so I actually think he, he's onto something. I think the, the caveat, though, is that self-identify. What does that mean? Mm. You know, I think, I think by design, like if you claim to believe in Jesus, there are kind of some essential things that you should hold to with based on what Jesus said and prescribed. I also find like sometimes non-Christians, especially like non-Christian friends will give a charitable view of Christianity on to their own Christian friends, mm -hmm. even though it's not accurate. Hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So like they believe it is wrong for a religious person to believe that someone can burn in hell. Mm. Therefore, they're friends with this person. There's no way, Ruslan, you believe that someone would actually burn in hell. Mm -hmm. So the vast majority of Christians that I encounter don't believe in these toxic things. Mm -hmm. But it's like, have you actually asked them? Mm -hmm. And have that's they been honest point. with you? Yeah, that's a good point. It's an interesting point. Because people try to like butter, like butter up kind of their their community, and then be like, oh, I know cool Christians. Mm -hmm. Like I, I know somebody in my life that I've worked with that that thinks I'm like a, a super cool Christian. And it would be a, a bad witness for me to start just going down, like, here's all the things that I think are, are going to hell. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Interesting. But they're like, oh, yeah, there's no way. And they never ask me questions either. Never in a million years have asked me questions. I've only asked them questions. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it is an accurate observation. People who identify as Christian more and more assimilate to what are, like, the normal standards of society. And I think mm -hmm. that's just something that's probably always been the case, you know? Yeah. 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 That's it. Yeah. I agree. You may not know I make music, but I got a new song coming out. And it's something I need you to do. But first, I want you to hear a snippet of the song. Look, I went from 
Being a porn addict too Sharing the gospel with a porn actress Who was criticized for being low status By the same OnlyFans who treat us so lavish I'm confused I swear y'all thought he did doing podcasts Hot takes He still can rap Now in order to get this song to the top of Spotify I need your help I need you to click the link below Or go to RuslanToTheMoon.com And pre-save this song What is a pre-save? It means that this song will be added to your library To remind you to listen to it the day it comes out And it also tells Spotify's algorithm That millions of people need to hear this song So help me promote Christian music That contextualizes the gospel And will help change lives By going to RuslanToTheMoon.com Or clicking the link below Oh, they got me with the dramatics You know that a moment cannot be static All respect due I feel like your version of Christianity Is very much like Yeah, be, be good to everybody And Everything will be alright yeah, yeah. you, okay. you have this like Very analytical approach to it Where you like Have all these different examples And you're very much invested In the, the, the details of it Where it was with Lush I feel like you're kind of like More like AD Where it's like I believe in God I, I have a relationship with God It feels good But you're not like Actively like investigating no, and, and learning and about I hope all way. that it's real. Like I hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't, you know what I mean. Very like, optimistic I, Christianity. Yeah. Well, yeah. What's, it, what's it, his point? Like you said, if it's Nico, which is the, how it started. This, you know, mm-hmm. our, you, you said, which I 100 percent agreed with. If if God is real, it would be the most important question uh, to, to deal with. That uh, I think if, if we're talking about the net positive, I think it's fair to say that if people lived the way Jesus prescribes in the New Testament, it would be a massive net positive to society across the board. Mm-hmm. The majority of our social issues would be solved. The majority of fatherlessness would be solved if people lived in, in the prescription of the New Testament and the book of Proverbs and all these different things. And so I think, is, am I tracking along? Is that kind of what you're getting at in terms of like, this is a good, because when I examine the words of Jesus, it's actually good. I mean, if, if just like an overall sense that you shouldn't do bad things because then when you die, something very, very bad is going to happen to you. If, if everybody was just sort of like living life by that notion, which that in itself is like just this one tiny part of what I think it is to be a Christian, then yeah, of course that would be a good thing. Here's, and this is Ruslan. This is why I said like, it's the works works, bro. Look at how it poisons people's mind. He literally was like, if salvation was exactly how the Bible said it is, then I would get on board with it. That's literally what he just said. But Mm. because the works based salvation committee has baked in, repent Mm. of your sins Monday through Sunday. And on top of that, because people use that works-based mindset framework, Mm -hmm. you get judging. You get to, oh, you're not Mm -hmm. Christian enough. You can't be Christian, da, da, da. You're not Christian at all because Mm -hmm. of this, what you're doing, you know, never about what you believe. It's about what you didn't do and what you did do, why people stack up like that. Well, you said something, Don, you said doing good works is in your best interest, or you said something to that degree, right? Like, like yeah. you don't do these things because they're harmful to you. Mm. Yeah. Now imagine thinking you don't do these things because they put you in hell. No, 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 no. You're just, you just don't do stupid things because they're stupid and they're going to harm you. Yeah. Right? right. So conflating that with a heaven and hell mentality, as mm-hmm. if there's not already a ton of uh, vested interest to like live right on this side of eternity. Like mm-hmm. God... J- Adam would agree that if we walk through all of God's ways of doing things, out, remove heaven and hell, like it's actually in your best interest. Yeah. But he, but but you have to make it a heaven and hell issue with the works thing. That's like, that's really interesting. Like that's really interesting that that you point that out, Don. But that also you wouldn't want to do things in your best interest. Like like how depraved is the human mind? Yeah. That's like, hey, wait until you have, wait until you're married to have sex. You know, no, that's stupid. And I was like. All the empirical data <laughs> shows that that's the best course of action, even yes. if you don't believe in God. That's the best. Mm-hmm. And you're like, no, right? Like, it's like, wow, the degree that we've completely just gone blind to common sense is yeah. fascinating. That's insane. Yeah. Hey, this clip is from our daily after party stream. If you enjoyed it, consider signing up for our Patreon community for only $5 a month where you get access to the replays of our daily after party streams as well as the uncut extended versions of our podcast, Discord access that's private, and a discount code for our merch store, only $5 a month. And ultimately, it's the best way to help us contextualize the gospel of Jesus using media, podcasting, and of course, YouTube. The link for that is in the description or in the pinned comment. Now, if you're like, meh, I don't want to sign up for $5 a month. I don't need another recurring subscription. Listen, I get it. You could also make a donation using PayPal, Cash App, or Venmo. But but we really want to get you on Patreon. I promise you, the perks are amazing. You should get on there. It's only $5 a month. I'll see you over there, all right? Peace.